Welcome, welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. Is the Airbnb market going to collapse and flood our listings with more supply? Let's take a look at that. We're going to bounce around a couple cities here and see what's going on. There is some activity out there in a couple of places that make you go, hmm. But let's start with Palm Springs, shall we? They're getting hammered out there. Palm Springs capped Airbnb rentals. Now some prices are in free fall. Now, if you've ever been to Palm Springs, then you know that there are a lot of different communities like Quinta. Uh, there is, uh, um, anyway, just a lot of different little enclaves over there. And what's happening was they capped the number of short-term rentals in a community at 20%. Now, there's only 11 communities that are above that threshold. And one is, I think it's called Gene Autry, is uh, sitting at, 41%. Let's take a look here. It says here, uh, those with licensees before the cap were grandfathered in, those count toward the cap. So most of the cap neighborhoods were over the limit as soon as the ordinance passed. Great. Um, some, like Movie Colony East at 21.8, are just above the limit. Others, like Racket Club Estates at 41.6, have blown through it. Now, what's happened is if you already have a license, you're capped. So, you, I mean, you're grandfathered, so you don't need to worry about it. But not everybody got a license. And so they're sitting there with their home, and now they're applying for the license. And find, they may have had this for a couple of years. They're finding out they can't get the license because it's above 20%. Well, guess what? They're having a hard time selling their homes because... You know, Palm Springs is a tourist area, and there's a lot of Airbnbs out there. And uh, so there's a lot of great deal. There's a lot of deals out there, it says here. The good news is there are plenty of great deals to be found in those markets as long as you're only looking to live there yourself. In the Gene Autry neighborhood, one listing warns potential buyer property cannot be short-term rented as there is a short-term rental permit cap in the neighborhood. And these are kind of what some of the homes look like out there, but they're going for over a million bucks. And some people have paid a million five, and now they can't even get rid of them for a million. So that's an example of what can happen in what I'm going to call a moderately sized city where they clamp down very hard and uh, like St. George, Utah did, and it can really hurt a community. Now, an area as large as Phoenix, well, what is Phoenix doing? Phoenix here says, <clears throat> another area of concern is that the city lacks a meaningful way, meaningful way to revoke or suspend the licenses for someone to operate a short-term rental. City officials says this can happen one or two ways under this ordinance. If a short-term owner receives three complaints that make it through the courts in one year, or if the owner is convicted of a felony crime. But here's the kicker. He gets three complaints, right? A complaint can take four to six months to make it through city courts which means three valid complaints may not be able to make it through in a year. So this has raised some concerns. Now, in Phoenix and in a lot of the requirements that the cities are putting in, you've already had to comply anyway. So they're just kind of reiterating. In other words, you have to have a map in your property that shows, you know, where the exits are. Well, people put a book in or they put a map on the fridge. They've been doing that. Um, renters have to have a background check. Well, you don't have to do the background check. Airbnb does that for you. So you don't have to worry about that. And the taxes have to be paid. Well, Airbnb withholds the taxes and they pay the taxes for you. Now, that has always been there, but they're clamping down a little bit. Now, Sedona is a whole different story here. Sedona plans to increase their short-term enforcement in 2024. Let me give you a little background of what's going on in Sedona. That's a town only of about 9,000 people with over 1,000 Airbnbs. During the pandemic, everybody wanted to go to places like Sedona just to get away from it all. And if you wanted to go buy a house to live in there, you were competing with buyers that wanted to buy short-term rentals. And it's flooded the market. Now, the natural course of of uh, the way things work in the market is that when there's too many of something, prices come down and they have. So a lot of these people are not making money uh, like they thought they would on their short-term rentals. And the Airbnb business is seeing a bit of a drawback. It's not seeing a collapse because nobody wants to do it. It's just that there's too many out there right now. There's a thousand. 
There's a lot of condos up there in Sedona too. Well, the other problem with Sedona, it's a very popular wedding destination, especially in October. That's their season. And so they came out with a ruling here that said they have a list of prohibited events, including weddings, receptions, retreats, workshops, as examples of functions that are banned in the short-term rentals. But she mentioned that she tried to broaden that list just so these things would not be limited to, so that people really understand the short-term rental is not in a, an event venue. In other words, we're okay with you renting it to a family, two families, but it's not an event. We don't want 30 cars lying in the street because you've got a big wedding. Well, they're trying to communicate this out to people. She said she, this councilman, she sent out about 1,500 emails to homeowners in Sedona Re, you know, restating the rules and saying, you, you know, you can't do this. Well, one person said, well, the party's already booked. How much is the fine? I'm going to head and pay it. Going to go ahead and pay it. <laughs> well, that didn't work. Restrictions are coming for Airbnbs. There's no doubt. But what I've noticed in what I'm looking at is I'm not seeing a flood on the market of people listing it. Because you go to the MLS, most short-term rentals, when they're sold, they're sold furnished. And I only see 200 homes for sale that are furnished. That's after you pull out the park models and mobile homes in retirement communities. So it's only 200, 250. So we're not seeing a flood of, of uh, homes. I don't have numbers for Sedona, but I would venture to guess that some of them are going to start selling simply because of supply and demand. The regulations that are out there, they're not clamping down too hard. Every regulation that I have seen is simply the result of too many people showing up at the house. Now, there are some cities like New York City that says that you have to be at that location. So in other words, you can't have an Airbnb across town and rent it out. You have to be there. Well, that, that solved that problem. Um, they, they want you to be very close to your Airbnb in case there's a problem. You have to register with the city. You have to get a license. You have to have emergency contact information. If there's a problem, they want to be able to know who to get a hold of that can solve the problem right away. They don't want you living in Northern Cal and owning a Airbnb in Sedona. So there are ordinances that are showing up like that more and more saying, you got to be close. If there's a problem, we need you to fix it. Now, you can put a manager there, so you can assign maybe a next-door neighbor. My manager is Bob, and he lives next door. And that helps get over that hurdle. But so far, the regulations that I've seen in the majority of the cities in Arizona are not enough to drive a big exodus of this industry, which is short-term rentals. But I'm reminded by Tina Tambor several years ago, when short-term rentals started to get purchased kind of on a much larger scale, she said, just because you're good at real estate does not mean you're good at tourism. So you got to know what you're doing. There's a lot of factors in owning a short-term rental. And some people just really didn't pay a lot of attention to it when they jumped in. Some are getting burned. Some are doing quite well. So you have any questions on this, shoot me an email at rick at rickhelps.com. Take care.